Hello everyone, we continue exploring uh, current in different substances, but mostly in conductors. So right before we explore how current can be arranged in even non-conductors like gases under specific circumstances. And also in the last video, we discuss what mobility of charge carriers is, okay? So I explained that mobility is the characteristic, first of all, depending on type of substance. And also it will be depending on concentration of ions, for example, like in gases. So you create ions by external uh, energy applied to it, like radiation, like X-rays, UV radiation. And that means uh, you see the parameter tau, uh, average time between collisions, obviously, it will be depending on concentrations of ions generated by X-rays and UV. For example, in semiconductors, uh, this um, value will might be given by producers, as I said, so like fabricants of that substance. And for example, in metals like best conductors, we also can find these values on the certain conditions like temperature because of course this mobility coefficient will be dependent on you know temperature it will be dependent on pressure as well concentration so there are lots of factors inside but in problems most of the time you'll be given or you need to find this uh, value of this physical quantity under certain conditions that you also be given in this problem and today we'll move next and we explore electric current and electric uh, current density. So I'll start off from metals because it's easier to explain what electric uh, current density is, how it's connected with the current. And then we move to uh, derivation of the Ohm's formula and then uh, first in a differential way and then we just integrate and come up into general standard form where is current connected with voltage and resistance. So if you're ready, grab your paints, grab your notes, and we can start. All right, so let's consider the piece of wire. Uh, we are going to consider metal, and this is the best uh, way to simplify our consideration. So we have electrons as negatively charged particles. So electrons as you can see, it travel from under external electric fields, under external electric fields, in this case, we put it in this way. So that's the positive terminal and this is negative one. So we have external electric fields and under this electric field, we have a drift of charged particles, in this case, electrons. All right, so um, as you understand, the current by definition is the total charge pass through cross-section area per unit of time and area we don't mention here, this by definition so column per second, that's the units units of current or in other words, ampere, amps okay, uh, in this case, uh, we can state that if we take the length of this wire to be equal to, let's say, D through the cross-section area, no matter where we put this, uh, the total number of particles n will pass over a given time delta t. So in this uh, case, we can assume that uh, the total charge can be described in terms of number of particles because electrons are the main charges uh, and the main charge carriers. So we can multiply n number of charged particles by the elementary charge, that's how we can get the total um, the total charge passed through the cross-section area. However, it's better to uh, rewrite number of particles through concentration n and in a given volume. So here we have a given volume. So this is not potential difference, it's a volume. So that means volume can be present for the cylinder or for any cuboid as height of this cuboid D in our case times the cross-section area A. So that means if we plug this into the formula for the current, we'll get the following uh, 
presentation. So we'll get number uh, concentration, number of particles in a given volume, times D times A and over delta T and times uh, elementary charge E. But as you notice here in this formula, we have distance over time. So over this time, each particle will move with average drift velocity. And if we use this fact that average drift velocity is distance over time, so we can state that this is exactly a drift velocity. So it's better, you know, to use for velocity like this Greek V. And that means it's better to write current as concentration E, velocity of the drift, and the area. All right, so right now we have the formula for the current. But uh, if you consider current crossing uh, some cross-section area with a given area here, it's better to have a look at the current density. So that's how we can define the current density as the total current uh, over the cross-section area, so over A. So over A. In this case, let me just make some amendments. So over A. And times the normal vector, because this is the vector quantity, so we are going to use normal to cross-section area here. And that's the total current that flows. Sorry. All right, so that means we'll get the formula for the current density in terms of the vector. So I skip the vector notation and just, just use the absolute value as concentration times E times V. So that's the main formula that we need to bear in mind. And later on, we will use that when we derive the differential form of the Ohm's law. And this is the right time to start doing that. So um, now the starting point in Ohm's law derivation is going to be the current density formula. So concentration time the unit charge in times velocity. So that's going to be a drift velocity. And as uh, you remember, it's so a drift velocity using mobility can be uh, expressed through mobility in this way. Uh, different uh, substance like conductors, whether conductors or even semiconductors, will have different types of charge carriers. So for metals, it's going to be a purely electrons. So for metals, as the best conductors. For ionized gas, it's going to be positive and negative ions. For gases, as well as liquids, as well as plasma, right? So that means uh, this is the general consideration, and that means for positive and negative particles, uh, we can basically put two separate equations in order to combine them into one uh, and consider different types of car uh, charge carriers. And for example, for semiconductors, semiconductors, no matter which type, like N type or P type, so we consider again negative and positive. So that means in general way we can express this drift velocity for positive particles using the concept of positive uh, of mobility of positive ions or po positive charge carriers, and for negative. But be careful for negative one, so we need to apply minus if we write vector equation, because uh, negative charge carriers uh, will flow in a way against your external electric field. So that means, in general, if we combine them, that value, that's physical quantity and uh, drift velocity, will represent both flow for negative and for positive particles. So that means the total uh, electric uh, current density will represent 
both negative and positive. So the general equation is going to be a concentration of positive, positive, positive particles, mobility of positive particles, uh, as well as charges, right? And the same as for negative. But as you understand, the charges for negative particles will be uh, negative, so that means we can use uh, minus and minus will give us, again, plus, but negative concentration, uh, concentration negative particles, uh, mobility of negative particles, and common factors is going to be E in this case. So that's how we can represent this. And also, because Q is positive, so we can rewrite this equation in vector form. So positive mobility, positive particles, and the same for negative concentration, negative uh, charge carriers, mobility for negative, and QE. So that's more general form. We have uh, some charge Q. And that's going to be the general equation in differential form uh, where we can see how the current density connected with electric external electric fields. Uh, so I would say that sigma, that's what I called conductivity, I'll mark as electric charge Q times positive uh, and negative components. I'll use their single letter, you know, to simplify our life, you know, and from here we can state our current density expressed through electric field strands in the following way. So this is actually differential form in Ohm's law. Uh, this principle can be applicable to any uh, substance where you have positive negative uh, charged particles at least like minimum amount so that to create uh, current and sigma is a conductivity conductivity of the substance it takes into account both positive and negative charged particles as the charge carriers and from there, we need to go back to our standard form. So bear in mind that we have current density as sigma times E. We just remember that if E is uniform created between positive and negative terminal, like in between plate, for example, you have positive plate and negative plate, so we can assume that here is, is going to be potential difference, so PD, over distance D along the substance. So here is the substance, no matter what's inside, like it might be, again, conductor, pure conductor, or it might be also semiconductor. In both case, if we apply the potential difference, so we can express our absolute value of E through by the way, I denote direction of E in that case. Uh, so we can express absolute value of the electric field strength through potential difference. So that means we can write voltage over distance D. And so hope you understand where it comes from. So basically this formula comes from uh, if you put the test charge, let's say positive E, so on the way in the uniform electric field uh, in terms of energy conservation, so potential energy, change in potential energy uh, will be connected with the uh, work of the force, electric force times the distance. So that means uh, change in potential energy I'll just write as uh, the unit charge times the potential difference. And here we will have E times electric field strength times D. So from where we can cancel E's and express potential difference and E in the way that I wrote before. So if we plug this back into the formula, we'll get, I just 
right now I just want to put the values, absolute values, so we get conductivity sigma times, and instead of E, we'll get voltage over distance. If I multiply both parts by the area, so that come back to the current, because current is G times A, so we'll get the following. So I will be on the left side, and here we will have sigma times volume, sorry, <laughs> volume, uh, voltage times uh, area and over distance. But normally we stick to the to the way that voltage or potential difference is I times R. So it means if I expressed voltage uh, through the current, I'll get that R is going to be a resistance. So this is resistance and I can write it through conductivity. So it's going to be D over conductivity sigma and times the area. All right, so hope you met this formula before. That's how resistance can be uh, expressed through the length of the wire, length of the conductor. Also, it's connected with the area. Yes, uh, the greater the area, the less resistance, of course, and it's connected with their um, conductivity sigma, that in this case it's in denominator, and hence, from microscopic consideration, we arrive to a uh, complete form. Now it's not in differential form. From differential, we complete a standard ohms for the uh, part of the circuit. So that's the standard equation for the arms law. And as you understand, this basic consideration uh, comes from, this formula comes from the idea of uh, free charge carriers and the process of scattering and accelerating in the electric field. So simply we use the classical approach using second Newton's law and that's how we derive this formula. So make sure you understand each step because it's very significant, especially for challenging problems. And that uh, will be very useful uh, during problem solution and on the following steps. So in the next video, I think I will consider several uh, problems dedicated to gas conductivity. So we'll be talking about uh, ions mobility mostly in gases because I consider this as the hardest topic. So I'll just clarify principles and we just calculate some values within the problems. Stay tuned up and subscribe if you're new here. Don't forget to like this video if you like that and share with others who are still struggling with math and physics. See you next time.